General Motors today named 51-year-old Mary Barra to replace Dan Ackerson. He's going to retire next month. Now, Mary Barra will become the first female chief executive of any major automobile maker. But it seems women still have a long way to go on glo global boards, as the latest Catalyst study suggests. Now, for eight consecutive years, there's been no increase in corporate board representation held by women in Fortune 500 companies. Women hold only about 17% of all board seats. So how do female executives feel about all this? Well, let's ask two experts. Gay Gaddis is the founder and the chief executive of T3. It's America's largest female-run ad agency. Also joining us, Lorraine Siegel, former owner and director of Vantage Partners. Lorraine is also on the board of Frontier Communications. Now, both Gay and Lorraine hold leadership positions on the Committee of 200. Uh, it's described as the club for some of the world's most successful women. I want to thank you both for being here. Gay, I want to start off with you. What was your reaction when you heard that Mary Barra was going to be the chief executive of GM? I said it's about time. You know, she's highly qualified, has been with the company since she was 18 years old, an engineer, and it was really a win for women. And I think in an industry that, yes, you pointed out, we have not had entry to. Lorraine, is the media making too much of the fact that this is the first woman to run a major automobile company anywhere in the world, or is this appropriate? Should we be highlighting it? Well, I wish we didn't have to speak about the fact that she's a woman. I think it would be better to say that she's the most qualified individual to take that position. And I think one has to take uh, kudos and give it where it's due. There is a board and an outgoing CEO who had the courage to appoint the right person to the job who just happened to be a woman. And that has happened in the past. There have been women available, but the board didn't have the courage to appoint them. So we're delighted that she has this position, but she has it because she's the best person for the job. Now, you sit on the board of Frontier Communications. I do. What are some of the conversations like, not necessarily at Frontier, but at the board level to create this kind of courage that you described? Well, Frontier has always had many women on the board. We have four at the present time. And in addition, I sit on the board of the National Association of Corporate Directors in Southern California. And they have a strategy of inclusion in their Blue Ribbon Commission, which says of their thousands of member companies, please take a look at your board and make sure that you have diversity of ethnic background, gender, and also skills base. So it is the right time for it. Uh, in fact, it's probably overdue. And the numbers are actually there because the Catalyst study showed that 73% uh, better return on sales for companies that have over three women on their board, and 83% better return on equity, and 112% better return on investor capital. So this is not just something good to do from a social standpoint, it's something which actually makes sense from a business standpoint. Okay, Gaddis, when you go in to make presentations for advertising business, typically are your counterparts uh, executives at that level of business? Uh, do they recognize or make a distinction of whether someone is happen to be female or male in a particular role? Well, actually, they always hire us because they think we can do the best job. And so, to Lorraine's point, you know, I believe... But was that always the case? No, it was not. And uh, I think that I have had to prove that through the years. And we've had to make our work exemplary and wonderful and, you know, really be able to attract the kind of fortune... 100 you know clients that we do uh, and so your work is always as good as the last thing you did uh, but I was not always in that position and there were times where I was trying to grow my company where I'm sure they thought well there's this southern lady coming in and what do they know about the ad business we're competing against worldwide huge corporations. Lorraine um, can you recall in, in your career those moments uh, when you were able to break through and be recognized just for your ability? Well, yes, and uh, very often I found being a woman was an advantage, um, and I became gender neutral myself. I didn't look at it from the point of view of being a woman. I was CEO of an aerospace distribution com company, ran a, a company in, uh, in financial services and also a healthcare company. In all of those areas, it was just could we get the job done and do a good job. So. The point is for But you didn't start at those levels. I did not start at those levels, but I am a serial entrepreneur, so I designed the environment to suit myself. And at the Committee of 200, we have more than 50% of our founding members and our existing members are entrepreneurs, and more than half of those actually run companies over 100 million in annual revenue. So 
when you look at the members of the committee of 200, there, there's 1.4 trillion that we actually run in the companies that we lead. So this is a significant percentage of GDP. It's not just women CEOs. This is something that affects the economy globally. Okay, Gaddis, uh, to recall when you began your career in the world of advertising, uh, if you could go back and do anything differently, knowing what you know now about the trajectory of corporate boards, what would it be? Uh, I would have tried very early on to have gotten involved in maybe that ramp to get into a corporate board. But I think what's great is now that I'm going to be chair of C200, I'm actually being interviewed for a corporate board uh, coming up soon. and. Hopefully that will be a good news. But um, what we have at C200 is really just the resources there. So if any companies watching your program tonight are saying, wow, we do need to get more women on our board, come to C200. We have vetted through some of the strongest and most financially capable women in the world. And so there would be great resources there for board potential.